Hey everyone, welcome to DrakeNectar.com. I'm your host, Josh Wade, and we're tasting through some New York Riesling uh, today. It's before a tasting tweet to FLX Wine, the Finger Lakes region uh, of New York. And got my glasses on, the contacts are in the shop. It is a uh, really cold, wet day, so I actually busted out the sweatshirt. Uh, pretty disappointing in how spring is uh, turning out right now. But we've got the seven wines from Finger Lakes region. We'll do this a little bit differently, uh, put together a montage of how everything's tasting. I'll give my full detailed notes uh, below. The first wine we uh, did is the Fox Run Riesling. Um, somebody mentioned that this was a uh, green sour patch kid in a glass. I agree. Uh, possibly a little bit of a stale limeade um, or a flat uh, limeade, lemon lime type of uh, sparkling um, canned lemonade you would get. Uh, overall, decent acidity. I need to compare it to the rest uh, before I really evaluate, obviously, the whole region. Um, so I'm going to kind of make my mouth a little tart. But we'll move on to the next one, and I'll check in periodically and give you some brief updates. We're moving on to the ravines. Um, Finger Lakes Riesling, uh, still on the dry side, 2008. Someone just described this as, and I loved it, um, an arrowhead found in a riverbed with fresh squeezed lime juice drizzled on top. And I gotta tell you that that about sums it up. It's um, kind of a wet minerality. The nose is very uh, soft and linen, a little bit of, um, you know, petrol on there. Uh, very light. All these are similar in color, and uh, you'll notice that throughout Riesling as you get to know them. On the dry side, you're going to find that citrus and that tartness. Um, so if you don't like your mouth to pucker, um, you know, you don't like that minerality in there, then you may not be a particular enjoyment of a Riesling just a sip. But they're fantastic with different, lots of different kinds of foods, uh, especially Asian food. Uh, uh, you've got... Um, you know, some seafood, anything with spice, uh, you're going to find a lot of great use for these. So there's my phone. Um, we'll move on. Let's give it a sit here. Um, I get a lot of good grapefruit components in there um, and the minerality that comes through as well. So we're going to move on to the next wine. We'll catch up with you in just a minute. Third wine tonight uh, was fantastic from Sheldrake Point uh, 2006. Uh, Riesling still on the dry side, um, really complex, soft on the palate, lots of floral notes, uh, some orange blossom, um, got a little bit of lemon zest in there as well. Um, it was um, smooth across the front, had a lot less of the uh, tartness that some of the other ones had, um, but it was still complex and the acidity was well balanced. Um, in all, I think it was $25, this is, is turning into be um, my favorite of the, I've only been through three of the six, but my favorite of the, of the six thus far. Okay, wine four tonight is from uh, Lumaro Landing, 11.8 um, ABV, so the lowest thus far, and it's on the medium dry side of things. I love this label. It's um, very consumer friendly and something that would stick with you, which is what you definitely want in a label um, when you're amongst the hundreds of wines on a shelf. The lightest in color of the wines and you get a big smack in the nose of pear and peach. Um, it really is quite fragrant. Very reminiscent of what I've been getting out of the state of Washington. Um, good fruit, some peaches, some stone fruit. Um, it's not uh, overly tart. Something I could really enjoy with food, without food. Paired really well with my TV dinner tonight. Um, sadly, probably more TV dinners in my future than I care to admit with my wife going back to school. Um, and this one's only $20, so something you can certainly afford, and that is a suggested retail. So <clears throat> really overall impressed thus far with the entire lineup. All right, now we're moving on to wines number five and six. Wine number five, um, it's a little bit more on the uh, medium sweet side of things. It's from Heron Hills 2007, was that right? Yeah, 2007. Um, really, actually, a very good wine. Um, <clears throat> kind of tinged my nose on the front end. Um, had a hard time describing what I was what I was getting, but you had some petrol and some mint on there. But I still get kind of that tinge in the back end, and I'm not going to say it's sulfur, but um, you know, it's it, maybe just a little bit of the heat coming out of there. Very light, reminiscent of I think it was our third one that we had on the lightness of the color.
actually kind of a really elegant uh, wine combining a little bit of sweetness and um, it, is, it dissipates pretty well. The acidity is <clears throat> not screaming, it's more on the mild side of acidity. Uh, reminds me more of a sip, uh, sipping Riesling, um, but certainly fantastic. $15. Uh, I am super impressed with all the Riesling that we're tasting here tonight. And lastly, we're moving on to um, Swedish Hills 2009 Riesling. Um, I would say that uh, this one is going to be the sweetest of the bunch with 2.5% residual sugar. <clears throat> um, Give it a sniff. A little tight, some soft floral components, maybe some soft peaches in there. Um, seems like it just uh, it needs to come out and play. Uh, it has been warmed up. It's been sitting here for probably an hour now. Um, so just real restrained on the nose. But what is there is subtle and fairly elegant, actually. Let's give it a sip. Obviously the sweetest of the bunch. A lot of people would really um, dig this wine just because of the sweet factor. Uh, for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of sweet wines, but this one's not overly sweet. Um, the finish is nice and lingering. It's got a good amount of acidity. But all that really kind of gets to me is whenever I taste these sweet wines, like a syrupy sweetness, um, you know, like the peaches or the... Um, uh, the fruit cocktail syrup that you get um, from like a Dell can of Dell fruit cocktail. All right, overall, I mean, fantastic to be able to participate in this event um, with people all across the country, around 60 different people tasting through these six wines. And I have to say that I am floored at the quality, um, the structure, the complexity, the, cl the clarity, the acidity, the balance, the flavor of Finger Lakes Rieslings. Um, really showing some high-class product, and the most expensive wine we tasted tonight was $30. Um, I think on average, these would have been an average of under 20. Um, so really killer price points. Um, all in all, I gotta thank um, Len Thompson of Len Devour's New York Corp Report, uh, Evan Dawson, and uh, all the rest of the gang, and so many knowledgeable wine people. It was uh, cool to see a lot of the winemakers online tasting and tweeting providing information to us. So life's always meant to be enjoyed with friends, even if it's these friends, a lot of them I've never met, but I do consider friends now. Uh, I just want to remind you to drink.